right, in this video I'm going to show you how to create PHP code blocks and begin using those in your existing website. To begin I have a basic HTML document open here that simply says hello world and that text is inside of a heading one tag. If we view the file in the folder behind we can see that it says index.php. I simply took an index um, with .html file and changed the extension to .php. So it's a standard HTML document with a different extension now that says .php. When I request a page in my browser, in this case it's localhost script slash files index.php I am requesting from the server this page. I'm asking it to send me this page back so I can view it. When I do that, the server takes this file and sends it back if it has a .html extension as is. However, if it has a .php extension, it will take this file and send it to the PHP interpreter, which is the PHP processor and the PHP interpreter takes this document and scans it and looks for PHP code blocks and as it finds those code blocks in the PHP code it executes the code when it's all done it sends the HTML with the processed PHP code the output of whatever it is that you wrote in your PHP script and sends it all back to the browser so that you can see it in here when it's all finished. If we view that file in Dreamweaver, we can see that it's just a standard HTML document. I'm going to show you three different ways to create code blocks. The first way is a less than symbol question mark PHP and then one space. The closing tag is a single space with a question mark greater than symbol. There has to be at least one space. You can have more. We can put as much white space as we want in here, but there has to be at least one space after this P here and one space before this question mark. So let's go ahead and um, and then your PHP code goes here. The second way to create a code block, I'll just mention that this is the most common way and the standard way to do it. This is less common doing this, removing those three letters. We call this the short open tags um, way of creating a code block. You're simply leaving off these three letters. So it's identical to this first way, there's just not the PHP there. It's generally not recommended that you use this method because in order for this to work, you have to specifically go into your PHP configuration file which is labeled PHP dot INI, PHP any file, and open that file up and I can show you what that looks like. It's a text file and if we search for short open, let's see, there it is. It says short open tag and it's set to off. It's off by default and so in order for this to work we have to turn that on it's off by default so if you move your file to a web host that does not give you access to this configuration file and they all um, they usually don't depending on if you're with a shared host um, you won't be able to turn this this method on and so your code won't work so it's not recommended that you do that the final way is with a script tag and that's pretty much the same thing as creating a JavaScript thing. We'll use the language attribute and then we'll select PHP. And then our PHP code goes here. So again we have our we have these different opening tags. The script one. The script one should work pretty much all the time and so should this first way. The second way usually won't.
Now, one of the most simple statements that we can use is print. It's a print statement, command, function, whichever um, you prefer to think of this as. But um, we give it some data, something that it can operate on inside of these parentheses. In this case, I'm going to give it a string. Strings are always inside of quotes, double or single. We'll talk about the differences in other videos. For right now, I'll say, hello, Zach. This is the data that we're giving it. This question mark and all of this stuff here that's highlighted and this quote and parentheses and print command, all of this is part of the syntax. Part of the stuff that needs to happen or needs to be there in order for this text to be displayed. When, once this actually gets displayed, it ignores everything else. It all gets thrown away at the end. It's just part of the code to make this text here be outputted or displayed. So we can copy that and we'll do it three different times in each of these code blocks. I'll save that and run it in the browser. Now notice that we only have hello Zach three or two times. The third time is not working because this is not being processed and so it gets sent to the browser as raw PHP code that has not been executed and so that just shows you that that way does not work again notice that this is just plain old text so let me close this and go back to the editor I'm going to erase these two for right now and I want to show you that one of the reasons PHP is so powerful is that we can embed it directly into HTML. I can put a code block right inside of these heading tags. And so that entire code block will be replaced with the text. And that text is left inside of these heading tags. So I can do this. I put this entire code block a PHP code directly inside of the heading tags. And I can do it a second time inside of a paragraph tag. So if we save this, we view it in the browser, we see hello Zach inside of a heading tag and hello Zach inside of a paragraph tag. If we view the source, you can see it's just plain text inside of HTML. And so that's really what makes PHP powerful, is its ability to be embedded directly into your HTML pages. So it's really simple to get started. If you have a, an HTML website and there's PHP installed on the web server or the web host there, all you have to do is change the extension and begin creating these code blocks inside of your existing web pages. There's a lot of cool functions out there that really don't take much work to get using. So if you wanted to print out the current date on your website or something like that, it's pretty easy. And we'll talk about all of those in some other videos. So that's pretty much it.